Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. In a previous video, we discussed the use and the importance of expected goals and expected points. I'll link the video in the cards now if you haven't had the chance to take a look. In this follow-up, we look at the importance of expected assists. Just quickly before that, the season may be over, but Football Made Simple will continue to upload football content. Everything from tactics, manager profiles, the impact of new signings and more. So hit subscribe and the bell icon so that you don't miss out. So anyway, let's get into the main section of this video. So what is an expected assist? That's pretty simple. It just measures how likely it is that a pass that ends up in a specific area will end up in a goal. It is important to note that the recipient of the pass doesn't have to take a shot for that pass to have an expected assist value. That means that every pass on the pitch has an XG value. But of course, a pass in your own half would have an extremely low XG value. It takes into account the type of pass, the location of the pass, the location where the pass was received and much more. Initially, analysts used to give expected assists and the XG of the shot the same value. So for example, if you passed it to the striker in a position where he had a first time shot, where the XG of the shot was 0.7, it must have been a great pass and it was assigned an expected assist of 0.7. But this ignores several problems. Suppose a defender passes the ball to a forward on the halfway line. At the point the forward receives the ball, the XG would have been less than 0.01. But then the forward gets the ball, dribbles alone and rounds the keeper and takes a shot from the position with the XG 0.8. The old expected assist system would have assigned the assister with an expected assist value of 0.8, when in reality he did not create a high quality chance. In addition, a problem arised when they only calculated expected assists on passes which ended up in a shot. Because what happens if a player plays a great pass into the 6 yard box and the striker opts to take a touch but then he's tackled? This would mean that the great pass from the midfielder would not get an expected assist value, an assist or even a key pass. So this is what expected assists looks to avoid. Ok, so who cares? Why would we want to know about expected assists? Well, again, the usual stats to measure statistics such as creativity can be misleading. Assists are great and many fans would swear to you that their attacking midfielder would have many more assists if they were playing with a competent striker. So expected assists helps us to tell the true story as it takes the finisher's ability out of the equation because the pass is assigned the value without the finisher having to take a shot. So this tab will tell us how creative someone actually is and this is especially useful when scouting. So let's say you're a director of football looking for an attacking midfielder and you pulled up a stats sheet. See, the problem with regular assists is that they do not care about how good the pass was, just where they had ended up in a goal. So say a midfielder passed to the striker 35 yards from goal and this forward has scary long range finishing ability and scores. And this same process happened 10 times throughout the season and the midfielder ends the season with 10 assists. But on the other hand, midfielder B spends the season threading through balls into the box for the forward to finish and he did this 8 times throughout the season. These stats would tell you to sign midfielder A as he had more assists, only for him to arrive at your club, struggle to create and become a bit of a flop. Expected assists would have prevented this by telling you the quality of the chances. To make things even better, expected assists factors in the type of pass into the number. So let's say two passes end up with the striker taking a shot from this position, but one of the passes was a long diagonal ball with a header on target being the result. The other one is a cutback from a good area with a shot on target with the foot being a result. Expected assists would score the second pass much higher. And again, it may be a case that one midfielder plays with an elite forward who makes the assist numbers look good, but the other is playing with a lower level finisher. So as a scout you'd want the better creator, not just the one who happens to play with a better finisher. So to finish off this quick video, I'll give you an example in the Premier League. So in the 2017-18 season, David Silva and Paul Pogba ended with a comparable number of assists, 11 and 10. However, a brief look at the highlights of each of their assist reel will prove that although Pogba made several great assists, several of his assists came from passes to the outside of the box, whereas Silva's came from within the box, which may indicate that Silva created the better chances throughout the season. And this is what expected assists shows you by including the quality of the chance. Right, I hope this video has helped you to understand expected assists better. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed and hit the bell icon so you don't miss another upload. That's all for today and remember, keep it simple.